Hi there, good evening. I'm Gareth. The, uh, the premise of my uh, talk this evening is that I want to put to you that as we move into a web environment, I'm just waiting for my first slide. Okay, great. As we move into a web environment that is no longer just dominated by reading, but is now also dominated by publishing, what I think is that the, the first victim of that web environment is discretion. When we should be asking the question, should we publish? Too often we ask the question, can we publish? We all celebrate the fact that marketing is no longer dominated by large brands who can bully, bully their message at us if they have enough budget. We celebrate the fact that with social media we can call these brands into account. But too often we let ourselves off the hook because we don't use social media correctly. And whereas social media should join us together, what we do is that we present this digital version of ourselves, which is just as false a description of ourselves as the marketing guys used to do when they dominated the messages with big brands. We all know friends on Facebook who have the perfect spouse, <laughs> the most unbelievably talented kids, the most amazing holiday experiences. Heck, we even know kids whose meals are so awesome, they have to Instagram them every time they're out for dinner. And so whilst it, we live in this wonderful world where there are these great social media platforms and we are all cool about this stuff, sometimes what we use these platforms for <laughs> and what we say we actually use them for can sometimes be very different indeed. And whilst these platforms should, should bring us together in a bigger community, sometimes what they can do is they can make us more insular looking rather than more outward looking. We become obsessed with presenting this perfect image of ourselves when it comes to social networks. We are told that social networks are a wonderful place where consumers and businesses can listen, but just like the pub bore who's waiting for you to finish your story so he can tell you his better story, so we're all talking and far too few of us are listening. Elton John sang the song which said, sorry seems to be the, oh, I've gone too soon. The oatmeal, the peerless oatmeal cartoon even has this wonderful example of when we're out for something as simple as dinner, we must give the waiter our four smartphones. We must get our photos taken. And which photos do we post onto Facebook? The ones where we look the best. Elton John sang, sorry seems to be the hardest word. Perhaps he should have sang, log out seems to be the hardest button. But how do, we, how do we engage? How can we uh, get this better? I've been involved in a software project which automates for consumers and organizations a response into social networks which aptly responds to consumer needs when they go onto social networks. What was the most common response to everything which happened on social media? <laughs> this was the most common response. We have completely fallen in love with ourselves and looked inwards when actually social media should allow us to look outwards. And one of the challenges that it brings is that whereas in our newspaper shelves we can spot banality at 100 paces, in the online world it's more difficult. I actually saw someone on Facebook this morning and my group of friends who wrote, I wish this Obama victory speech would end up so I can get back to breakfast TV. <laughs> what? So how do we manage our brands online? I'm a big rugby fan, and Stephen Ferris, who you can see here, is a, big, uh, I'm a big, uh, is a big hero of mine, and he's very active in social media. His social media persona is very similar to the way he plays rugby. It's bravado, it's muscle, it's full on. So last year when he was going to Florida, as you can imagine, he can't, get, he can't wait to party. Until that is, he gets a note from his nana, have a good holiday. <laughs> and even though he'd kill you at the side of a scrum, thanks nana, he still has kisses for his nana. How many times have we interviewed someone for a job who assures us that they love nothing more than reading cultural books and going on weekends all over the world, but when you move from their LinkedIn world to their Facebook world, you find that it's actually a very different place? <laughs> but this is a serious connotation. In 2004, an American teacher called Stacy Snyder, she graduated, and there was one thing she wanted to do, she wanted to teach kids for the rest of her life. On her graduation uh, night out, she took some photo and said that she was a drunken pirate. In 2005, when she went to get her job, she was told by the dean of her university that she wasn't going to get a job because she was a bad example to kids. In 1965, Andrew Feldman took LSD when he was at university. Nearly four decades later, in 2001, he blogged about it. In 2006, when he tried to cross the border from Canada into America, he wasn't allowed. We're leaving detritus behind us that lasts across the decades. I'm not sure if you, like me, are a child of the 70s, but if you are, you'll recall the Blue Peter box. This was the box that we put stuff into, that 50 years later we would look back and remember what life was like in the 1970s. When people look back at us in 50 years' time, they're not going to need a Blue Peter box because they have this social media box. 
let's make sure that that box isn't just full of banal bullshit. Let's make sure that box is full of important stuff. I started with Jim Carrey, and perhaps I can finish with Jim Carrey. There's a wonderful moment in the Truman Show when Jim Carrey's character recognizes that actually the world doesn't revolve around his backside, and he decides he's going to step out into freedom. And perhaps like Jim Carrey, as he steps out into freedom, you, like me, will go on a journey where we decide that we're going to curate the important, reject the banal, and make sure that the content that we publish means something. And maybe, just maybe, we should get out more. Thank you.